الله أكبر 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 كلما أحرموا من الميقات وكلما لب الملبون وزيد في الحسنات وكلما دخلوا فجاج مكة وتلك الرحبات وكلما طافوا بالبيت العتيق وضجت الأصوات بالدعوات وكلما سعوا بين المروة والصفا وتلك المشاعر المفضلات وكلما وقفوا خاضعين بعرفات وكلما أريق هناك من العبرات وكلما نظر إليهم الجبار من فوق سبع سماوات وكلما باتوا بمزدلفة وأفاضوا إلى منى ورموا الجمرات الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي خلق آدم بيده من صلصال كالفخار وأحظاه بجواره وأسجد له ملائكته المقربين الأخيار فسجدوا إلا إبليس أبا فباء باللعنة والصغار أحمده سبحانه على نعمه المدرار وأشكره على مترادف فضله الخزار وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له توحيدا متقنا أقتنيه اليوم الفاقة وإنه لنعم المقتنى متظاهرا عليه الجنان ظاهرا وباطنا سرا وعلنا مشهودا به لربنا كما شهد, شهد به لنفسه معلما مبينا فقال إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فأعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أفضل من صلى ونحر وحج واعتمر ووقف بعرفة والمشعر نبي ما طلعت الشمس على أجمل منه وجها ولا أنور ولا أرفأ قدرا منه ولا أكبر نبي خص ببعثته إلى الأسود والأحمر نبي غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما تأخر ومع ذلك قام على قدمه الشريف حتى تفطر وجاهد في الله حق جهاده فما توانى ولا تأخر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجز والطهر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أما بعض فيا أيها الناس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اتقوا الله تعالى واعلموا أن يومكم هذا يوم فضيل وعيد شريف جليل رفع الله تعالى قدره وأظهره وسماه يوم الحج الأكبر يجتمع فيه الحاج بمنى يستكملون مناسك الحج يحيون سنة أبيهم وأبينا إبراهيم عليه السلام بما يذبحوه في هذا اليوم العظيم من القرابين فإن الله تعالى أمره بذبح ولده وفلذة كبده فامتثل أمر ربه طائعا وخرج بابنه مسارعا وقال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى فقال يا أبت افعل ما تؤمر لا متوقفا ولا متفكرا فاستسلما جميعا للقضاء المحتوم وسلما أمرهما إلى الحي القيوم فلما أسلما وتله للجبين وأهوى إلى حلقه بالسكين اطلع الله تعالى منهما على صدق النية واليقين ونظر إليهما بعين الرحمة وهو أرحم الراحمين فنودي 
أن يا إبراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا إن كذلك نجزي المحسنين إن هذا لا هو البلاء المبين فكانت سنة مؤكدة في ذريته على القول المختار وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما عمل ابن آدم يوم النحر عملا أحب إلى الله من إراقة الدم وإنه ليأتي يوم القيامة بقرونها وأصفارها وأشعارها الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد Brothers and sisters this is an aid that has come for us after a time of sacrifice and after a time of giving and after a time of brokenness we have not been on the Hajj few of this Ummah in the strangest of years have been on the Hajj and we know how much we miss that and we know how painful it is to feel that we are standing outside those golden doors excluded but we have made sacrifices we have participated in the rituals of Arafat we have participated with our dua and with our fasting and with our sacrifice and we have experienced something of the brokenness ثُمَّ الْيَقْضُوا تَفَثَهُمْ وَالْيُوفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ وَالْيَطَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَطِيقِ Allah says at the end on the day of the Eid let them put an end to their unkemptness their matted hair and their fingernails and their uh, sweat uh, let them end their ihram and let them fulfill their pledges because Arafat is a time when we vow and when we fulfill our vows uh, and let them turn around to the ancient house we have been in a sense in a kind of ihram ourselves an easy ihram but in some ways difficult not just for days but for months this lockdown has for many of our people not been an easy time people have sickened people have died and gone on to the mercy of their Lord it has been a time when we have been a little bit broken and that is a time when the hearts once again feel the need for the Qibla and for the Kaaba and for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we remember that we are from him inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon it has been a time of humility a time of staying at home a time when the doors of ibadah have seemed easier and the doors of the dunya have seemed harder to reach shopping centers, coffee shops all our usual places of ghafla or distraction have been closed subhanallah and we realize that history is indeed in the divine hands who could have imagined this Eid when we were here a year ago people were here a year ago who are now in their graves people are here now who are not here last year because they realize their need for their Lord whatever human beings may accumulate and may plan for the distant future Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners and this is from his qahar and from his will that humanity shall be in this state of qabd, of constriction, fearful as believers we know that there is a good side to this and we have already seen some of the barakat of this strangest of times a certain humility on behalf of the elites remember all of those anti-immigration people banging on about the dangers of more and more Muslims more and more foreign people more and more unfamiliar faces it's becoming strong in Europe and America with the Muslim ban <laughs> where is that voice when that same person is in intensive care looking through the plastic at the faces of the Muslims and the minorities that are working overtime in order to save his life where is his argument the health service is so full of our people I have attended the Jumu'ah prayer at Addenbrooke's hospital subhanallah what a sign and what a lesson I had no idea how many people would come at first not many I wasn't even sure that we had enough 
And then they came and they came in their doctor's coats and in their blue scrubs and they came and they came. SubhanAllah, there must have been over 200, 250 people there. And they were in a hurry. It's not a holiday for them. But SubhanAllah, we are necessary. And the world is seeing this. Where are the arguments? Where is the Islamophobia? When we point out that the first three NHS doctors to die of this virus were all Muslims. Where is their argument? We have driven a stake through the heart of the Islamophobes. This is a major breakthrough for our community and we will inshallah see its blessing because now we have an argument that they can't counter, uh, uh, countermand. So there have already been blessings. But in this time we need to look for what is best. And one of the things that we've seen is that modern individualism has not helped human beings very much. In a time of crisis, we need to be together. The modern spirit is about rugged independence and autonomy, doing your own thing, finding your own path in life, being free. But what use is that if you're sick and you really hope that your relatives haven't forgotten about you, that your neighbours know your name? Britain is the first country in the world to have a minister of loneliness. They want us to integrate into something that seems to be disintegrating. Who would have thought of such a thing? But it's an emergency. Society is not holding together. People do not know the names of their neighbours. People don't see friends and family. The most fundamental human tie, Silat al rahm itself, which goes back to the dawn of time, is kind of forgotten, not important, because everybody is earning and consuming and partying and then earning and consuming and partying but this is not right for Bani Adam. So what we have seen in this time is that people in this brokenness with the shopping centres closed have started to realise what is truly important. Friends are important. Family is important. Neighbours are important. And alhamdulillah, we have seen in this mosque and in the blessed community of directors and volunteers in this mosque uh, that when everybody else was stepping back for fear of these germs, they stepped forward and started to help. Hundreds of hot meals delivered to Muslims and to non-Muslims. Food packages, support of various kinds, a listening ear. Uh, the mosque has been closed to prayer, but the mosque and religion is not just about prayer, it is about everything and particularly it has to step up when there is an emergency. Alhamdulillah, thanks to the efforts of this community there's been so much media coverage. Those positive stories are changing the image of Islam in this country and inshallah we need to make sure that that image is changed for good. Hospitality and sacrifice, neighbourliness, these are the virtues of Sayyidina Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salam, are they not? We are not designed to be alone. We are pack animals. We are designed to be with others. Al jama'atu rahma wal furqatu adab. Togetherness is a mercy, separation is a punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He summoned all of the souls before the creation of the world and said, Alastu bi rabbikum, He uses the plural. All of humanity is there and He addresses us. All together, and we say, Bala shahidna, yes, we bear witness. And at the end of time, at the day of the manshar and the mahshar, we will all be together as one. And that the Hajj tells us this lesson we come as individuals and as families, and then as we get closer to the blessed Kaaba and closer to that light, more and more people, more and more Muslims, and it's finally three million people, four million people, and Arafat is the final sign of that. The Holy Prophet وسلم, overcame the wildness of Arabian tribalism uh, and preaching, giving his final khutbah from the Mount of Mercy, looking out over these people. And in their ihram, you couldn't tell where they were from or who they were or whether they were rich or poor. Their ancestors no longer mattered. What mattered was that they were Allah's slaves as brothers Ibadullah, Ikhwana, the day of Arafat, the day when tears fall 
At the beginning, people are distracted. By the end, as the sun reaches the horizon, you can see everybody is in tears. Whatever their nationality, black, white, it doesn't matter. The tears are the same. We're all the same, Benny Adam. And we know where we are going, to dust, and then to the resurrection. And the tears fall, as on that day, we remember the day that ends all days. The tears fall, the prayers rise up. Where on earth today, in our age of nationalism and inequality and racism and all of the other nonsense, can you see such a sight? Nowhere. You can't tell who is rich, who is poor, who is the American, who is the Bosnian, who is the African, it doesn't matter. Education, everybody's in their ihram. Equality. One qibla, one prophet, one lord. Only that principle can bring together human hearts. And on that day, the Holy Prophet وسلم, knowing that all of the feuds and the stupidity, what we would call the nationalism of the jahiliyyah, what now is Russia and India and all of this other way in which the shaitan divides up Bani Adam. Huh? What does he say? Inna dima'akum wa amwalakum haramun alaykum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha wa fi baladikum hadha. A stunning announcement. All of those former uh, relationships and the vengeance and the vendetta the Cosa Nostra feuding, finished. A line is drawn under all of that because you are now God's servants, equal in this Ummah, radically equal before the one Lord. Uh, no, he says, speaking to all of these Arabs and others, Bilal, Salman, Sahib, such a transformation. Human unity is possible. Huh? That your blood and your wealth is sacrosanct. Every other Muslim is sacrosanct to you. How sacrosanct? As holy as this day of yours, and as holy as this month, and as holy as this city, the city of Makkah. That's very holy. That time and that place are holy. That is the holiness of the blood and the wealth of your fellow Muslim. You do not treat him. You do not abuse him in any way. This is the Holy Prophet's first subject on his khutbat al-wada, huh? so beautiful. Unity, the hajj brings us together, scattered atoms and then we become one. And in the Kaaba it's as though huh, there is only the souls praising Allah as the angels go around his throne. There is no more beautiful sign on earth of a better possibility for human beings. Law uh, anfaqta, had you spent had you spent everything that is on the earth, you would not have united their hearts. But Allah has brought them together. Who would have thought that those wild tribal Arabs could have been brought together in this extraordinary spectacle of Arafat? Nothing like it had been seen before on earth since, I suppose, the day of Alastu bi Rabbikum, hearts as one. So neighborliness, the Hajj is about watching out for the people who are beside you, who are behind you, who are thirsty, who don't have anywhere to stay. The Hajj part of the process of migrating from ego to ruh, turning away from dunya and turning towards Baytul al Haram is noticing other people. That's why the Hajj is not solitary, but the greatest multinational gathering of people on earth. It's about adab with others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as expressed in the famous hadith, says when he sees the people of Arafat, dusty, in the ihram, united as people of Tawheed, tears running down their dusty faces, he says to his angels, Unzuru ila ibadi, atuni shu'than, ghubran, dahin, ushidukum anni qad ghafartu lahum. Look at my slaves, they've come to me dusty with messy hair, thirsty, I call you to witness that I have forgiven them. We need that. 
Our little tawbahs need to be stronger. We need the blessings of Arafat. We need to stand shoulder to shoulder with people we've never met before and whose languages we can't even recognize, realizing that that doesn't matter. Every human being has a ruh and needs, and our need is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La malja'a min Allah illa ilay. There's no refuge from Allah except in him. And this is what we discover as we move towards Allah's ancient house and we turn our back on the dunya and all of the flashing lights and the nonsense and we realize that it was nonsense and never brought us happiness and instead what do we need? We need to embrace someone we've never met before, to stand behind somebody we've never met before and to say ameen to their dua because we know it will be good and we know that Allah is forgiving today. We need to remember the extraordinary blessing that the Holy Prophet وسلم, conferred upon his Ummah. And we need to keep that mood going. Look at the Ummah today. This country with its machinations against that country and this group condemning that group and this nationality and it's as if we've slipped right back into the Jahiliyyah which was expunged, annihilated on the day of that great Arafat. We've kind of who could have thought it? We've been backsliding. Back we've gone. And we're suffering. Who benefits? Humanity doesn't benefit. Individuals don't benefit. Countries don't benefit. Groups don't benefit. It's all negativity. A zero-sum game at each other's throats. A tragedy. But neighborliness for the ummah, certainly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of al-jari dhil qurba wal jari junub the neighbor who is near and the neighbor who is far. These are the people who have rights over us. The neighbor has big rights in Islam. <laughs> the sound hadith, Jibreel kept urging me to be good to neighbors until I thought he's going to give my neighbor a share in my inheritance. Almost family. It's a huge thing. So who is the near neighbor and who is the far neighbor? The ulama say the near neighbor, relatives, or it could be Muslims. The far neighbor is the one who maybe lives at a greater distance, maybe more than 40 houses away, but it could also mean a non-Muslim. We know the famous hadith in Tirmidhi, uh, when somebody brought a uh, soup, a stew to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the first thing he says is, هَلْ أَهْدَيْتُ مِنْهَا لِجَارِكَ الْيَهُودِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ Have you given some of this to your Jewish neighbor? So it's not just about them and us the Ummah and everyone else, those who are blessed to have their sins forgiven on Arafat and those who don't know even the name of Arafat, know it is for wider humanity, the further neighbor. And in this mosque, and in this strange year, during this strange lockdown, we have discovered this virtue, alhamdulillah, that we have found the blessing of giving. Putting on the mask, and the visor and all of that nuisance and the gloves and the social distancing but despite that going up in the basement of this mosque uh, putting together the food and it's been donated alhamdulillah by so many of the uh, local muslim food businesses they too have been busy and active and then it goes out and there's so much benefit in this it'am al ta'am feeding people and we've discovered that there's so much need أَحْسِنْ مُجَاوَرَةَ مَنْ جَاوَرَكَ تَكُنْ مُسْلِمًا Be a good neighbor to your neighbors and you'll be a good Muslim. This is what it means. So we need to make sure that we know their names, we know their needs, we know their circumstances because there is so much need in this society. So rich, so many poor people. Cambridge has one of the biggest disparities of rich and poor in the United Kingdom. There are people who send their kids to school without breakfast. There are people who can't pay their bills. There are students who are marooned because of the virus. There's a lot of need. So even if we can't come to the mosque as often as we used to and as much as we would like, or maybe we're too old, or maybe whatever the reason might be, ha, there's always something we can be doing that is additional something for neighbors, picking up the phone, talking to some second cousin who hasn't heard from you for years, stay in touch. Nobody, 
is going to get angry with you just for being polite. And we need to do this, and we need to show this ummah as an ummah of uswatun hasana in order to follow the commandment that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid down uh, in that great hajj. What a spectacle that must have been. So much light in those hearts uh, and that burden of tribalism and jahiliyyah lifted. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'irin muslimin. Allahu Akbar, 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 La ilaha illallah, wahtahu la sharika lah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, azharna ala fitrati al-Islam, wa ala kalimati al-Ikhlas, wa ala shahada, an la ilaha illallah, وأن محمد عبده ورسوله أظهرنا وأظهر الملك لله والحمد لله على ذلك. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept our intentions to perform the Hajj and accept our intentions to perform the Umrah and to be connected at all times through that intention to the Blessed House and therefore to humanity, so that the spirit of the Ummah again can be as it was in the past, or at least some shadow of what was in the past, huh? the fact of ummatun wahida, a single ummah. As'adallahu aidakum, wa taqabbala ibadatakum, wa wafiqillahu mawlatu umuri al-muslimin, ila al-amali bi kitabillah, wa sunnati khatim al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Barakallahu fikum. وتقبل عيدكم وأعمالكم الصالحة بارك الله فيكم وعيد مبارك أعاد الله تعالى عليكم باليمن والخير والنصر والتوحيد والبركة والعافية والقبول إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله